Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India PTL project on econometry modeling. So, today we will discuss the reliability of viability econometry modeling. So, in the last class we have discussed the entire setup of viability econometry modeling the, where the problem boundary is with respect to two variables. So, we, 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 we have discussed the details about the estimation of alpha head and beta heads. So, after getting the estimated value of alpha head and beta heads, so then our problem setup is the completely different. So, for as a forecasting or policy implication is concerned. So, let me highlight what is a what is a the I mean last class discussion. So, for bivariate models with respect to y and x, y equal to alpha plus beta x and we have to introduce the error terms u and the estimated model equal to y, y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x okay? and uh, where alpha head equal to uh, y minus uh, y minus y bar minus beta head x bars and beta head equal to summation x y y summation x squares where x equal to x minus x bar and y equal to y minus y bar. This was our last class discussions. Okay. But you know that movement from the first equation to second equation where the estimated models we have described y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. So, we have applied the technique called as a OLS techniques. Of course, there are several techniques like ordinary least square methods, general generalized least square method, weighted least square methods and maximum likelihood estimator. So, here we start with the OLS technique that is ordinary least square methods because it is a, it is very simple technique, easy to understand and easy to apply. That is how we, we start with the OLS technique, then we subsequently move to GLS techniques, OLS techniques and MLE technique where we need to have because some of the problems it is very difficult to handle through OLS techniques. So, that is how we have to apply the other techniques like GLS, WS and maximum likelihood estimates. But in the last class uh, we have little bit uh, you know uh, problem regarding the uh, OLS you know restrictions. So, before you applying OLS technique then obviously we will get the estimated model, but the application of OL OLS is based on certain assumptions. So, before we check the reliability part of the models. So, let me f first highlight the assumption related to LS technique because which uh, last class we have not dis discussed details. So, we have to little bit finish about this particular common because uh, the main problems you know uh, 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 main problems we will derive from this particular assumptions because that is the starting point of econometric modeling. So, you see here. So, what are the assumptions regarding this uh, bivariate modeling? So, that is our last class uh, you know. Uh, uh, discussion. So, for this particular models y equal to alpha plus beta x uh, plus u. So, we have three parts this is one part, this is another part and this is a number this is called as a total variation, this is explained variation, this is unexplained variations. Okay. So, now assumption related to this particular component, this particular component and this particular component and also overall fitness of this particular model. So, the first standard assumption is that model must be linear in parameters. Okay linear in parameters, linear in parameters. So, what we have already mentioned here, so here alpha beta are represented in the form of linear and that too you can say uh, without any problem. So, linear in parameters. Second, uh, second assumption is that uh, x should be your uh, 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 independent variable should be non stochastic, okay. this should be non stochastic. Okay. So, third item related to the uh, 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 error component. So, what we have discussed last class uh, mean of error term should be equal to 0, then fourth assumption is the variance of error term should be equal to unit that is sigma square u and fourth fifth assumption is that covariance of u i u j should be 
e equal to 0. Okay. So, here this variance of u, uh, u means it is nothing but covariance of u i u j is equal to sigma square u provided i equal to j. If i not equal to j, then this will come down to this stage. Okay. So, now this particular uh, this particular structure is called as a homoscedacity. If the variance of error term is exactly equal to 1 or you know constant or you can say unique or uh, this particular presentation is called as a homoscedacity issue. So, now if that is not the case, then this problem called as a heteroscedacity and that is the serious problem under econometric modeling. We have a special component on heteroscedacity, we will discuss detail about that particular issue. If there is a heteroscedacity, how to detect it and how to solve this particular component. Until unless you solve that particular component, this model estimated model cannot be used for forecasting. Okay. So, then covariance of u i and u j, covariance of u i u j should be equal to 0. Okay. If it is not equal to 0, then there is a problem called as a autocorrelation or sometimes it is otherwise called as a serial correlation. So, now uh, if uh, we have estimated models, then of course, with the help of estimated model, we will get the error terms. So, now once we have error term, we will create several uh, other variables related to error terms like u 1, u 2, u 3. So, now the, we have to track the relationship between u 1, u 2, u 3 like this. So, if this relationship you know uh, by default you know uh, uh, cross, uh, cross uh, correlation uh, if not equal to 0, then it will lead to serial correlation. For instance, like this uh, we have u 1, u 2 up to u n. So, this side u 1, u 2 up to u n. Okay. <coughs> so, now this is we will correlate with u 1 1, u 1 2, u 1 n similarly u 2 1, u 2 2, u 2 n. Okay, so, u n 1 up to u n n. Okay. So, now this particular problem is called as a homoscedacity and heteroscedacity issue. Okay. This particular problem is called as a homoscedacity or heteroscedacity problem. If that is uh, if all these other items like this, uh, these, these particular uh, you know diagonals, uh, uh, these particular uh, this is called as a of diagonals and all diagonals, these are these are should be equal to 0. If that is not the case, then this particular problem is called as a serial correlation and autocorrelation. It has a serious problem again uh, uh, in the case of uh, modeling, particularly econometric modeling. So, when there is a serial correlation, obviously, when we will go for you know any typical uh, problem or any estimated model, of, uh, there will be definitely autocorrelations there is a standard techniques are there, standard statistics are there to know the exact value of autocorrelation or serial correlation. Uh, there is a certain limits, if it will cross that limits, that means upper limit or lower limit, then it will be problem for estimated model. So, we have to find out how that particular problem can be solved and that model can be used for forecasting. So, this particular structure is called as a autocorrelation issue. Okay. Similarly, this is fifth standard assumptions. Then there is another assumption called as a. Uh, this is sixth assumption. Sixth assumption related to covariance of u and x should be equal to zero because our model is equal to y is a function of you know uh, x and u. So there are three uh, uh, three variables. We start with the two variable initially, but ultimately we will get a um, oh, variables called as a u. Okay. So, that is the difference between e y minus y head that is estimated model. Okay. Covariance of u a, a x must be equal to 0, uh, otherwise it will create problem. So, I will detail discuss when next uh, next items. Uh, so, covariance uh, covariance upon uh, you know x uh, x uh, x i or x j is equal to 0. In fact, this x i x j is not uh, uh, actual problem in bivariate models. So, when we will go for a multivariate model, then one of the standard constant is that there are multiple number of independent variables like x 1, x 2, x 3 like this. So, now all these independent variables should be independent, okay, means the relationship between all these variables should be uh, independent. There should not be any again association between these independent variables. If there is a such problem, then it is called as a multi coordinate issue. So, we will discuss detail when we will go for multivariate modeling, because we are in the bivariate models and this particular <coughs> problem may not be there, uh, means it should not be there in the case of bivariate model. So, that is how there is a, a co covariance between u and x. Now, 
since u e g in the right side uh, of this particular equation obviously, there are two variables x and u. So, now if we really integrate with this multiple unit issue x and y should be totally independent that should that means, there there should not be any association between x and u. Okay. If it is there then it will be problem. So, ne next so now if we integrate this uh, all these uh, equation in stru structure way with respect to error term then error term should be followed by normal distribution 0 mean and unit standard deviations okay Norm, 0 mean and unit standard deviation. this is the most important one most important one for this particular econometric modeling okay so then uh, ninth there should be variation on x there should be variation on x of course, if there is variation on x, then there should be variation on y. For instance, uh, we have y series and we have x series, forget about y in the meantime. So, now for every y, there is x item. So, now if the x items are very much similar, then obviously, we will get we, uh, our uh, model cannot be better fitted. For instance, the, uh, for every y, the uh, x values are 2, 2, 2, 2 say or 5, 5, 5 say, then obviously, there is no such variation. So, uh, in this particular context, this model cannot be better fitted. So, this is by default we have to replace it, otherwise you cannot uh, uh, get a best fitted model. These are the you know inspection um, before you go for you can say estimated models. So, because to get the estimated model, you have to put lots of labor and efforts. So, after that if the model is not reliable, then obviously, you have to redesign and re-estimate to get again better fitted model. But there are certain clues before you go for estimation. So you have to clarify all these details. And one of such clues is like this: there should be variation on both y and x. But x is very important here because x is a x influence y only. So there should be some kind of variability in x. Okay. So this is another assumption related to variance of x. And uh, model must be correctly specified. Model must be model must be correctly specified. Model must be correctly specified what is what is mean that for instance we are just representing y equal to alpha plus beta x okay so there are many ways we can we can represent this uh, uh, particular relationship between y y and x for instance we can also write y equal to alpha plus beta to the power x or we can write y equal to y equal to alpha, uh, alpha uh, beta y x like this or we can also write y equal to uh, alpha plus beta x square plus gamma x like this. So, uh, there are many ways ma ma many ways we can represent the relationship between y and x, but for a particular problem or particular instance every uh, every equation may not be very fitted for the um, you know econometric modeling. So, we like to know what is the best uh, mathematical relationship we have to use to get the best fitted models. So, the, uh, if for that you have to do lots of homework and you have to test there are certain procedure of test or graphically you can plot it and you like to know what is the exact relation whether it is a linear one or nonlinear one then accordingly you have to proceed further. In fact, if it is a nonlinear one then it may be very complex problem. So, what you have to do in that linear setup you have to first transport to the linear format by using various transformation rule, there are various transformation rule through which you can transfer the nonlinear problem to linear one. Then you have to go for estimation. So if you don't go for uh, you know transformation, then it will create lots of problem again. And means typically it is problem with the OLS technique. Okay, so you must be very uh, careful about this. Okay, then then uh, next is number of observations. Number of observations should be greater than to number of variables, number of variables, number of variables, number of observations should be greater than to number of variables. For instance, you see this this particular problem for bivariate econometric it is not a serious issue, because we have two variables only. So, obviously, uh, most of the problems is more than two, uh, you will get more than two sample. Uh, so, if it is more than two samples, then obviously, there is no issue at all. But when there is a multivariate problem where the problem setup consists of you can say so many variables like say 10, 20 or 30 or 100, then that time sample size is a very typical issue. So, you have to be very careful how many variables you must be putting in the system and uh, how many observations are there. So, uh, by default it should be whatever variables you are using in a particular system, your number of sample size should be 5 times than that. 
so that means if the variables are 5 in numbers in a particular system or in particular modeling setup then obviously sample size at least should be 5 into 5 so that means at least 25 but 25 is also very small one by standard rule your sample size should be greater than to 30 if it is greater than to th means 32 the exactly if it is greater than to 32 then obviously there is a you can say uh, we have a two different sample structures some small sample and large samples so minimum number of sample must be greater than to 32 uh, for a particular problem whether it is a bivariate or multivariate and if it is a multivariate then obviously then there is a second criteria so that means the second criteria is number of variables and your sample size should be multiple to 5 so now if it is 10 variables then obviously sample size should be at least 50 if it is less than that then there is a problem of modeling or estimation process so if it is more than that then no doubt about it a, uh, the model accuracy is very high when the sample size is very high the model will be less accurate if the sample size is very small so that is how you have to <laughs> go always go for higher and higher sample size so that the model accuracy will be very very perfect so that is how the reliability part is a concern because the reliability part uh, the objective of reliability part uh, just to check whether the estimated model can be used for forecasting or can be we call it a, that uh, it is a best fitted model so that for that we we have different test structures by this process of test we like to say uh, uh, we like to be in a position to say that this particular model can be used for forecasting or you can say policy use so this is a, a 11th uh, uh, assumption so uh, it is where number of observation greater than to number of vari variables then last but not the least then relation should be very uh, identify one so relationships relationship should be identify properly identify should be properly identify Okay. For instance, you see here, this particular problem uh, for two variable model, it is not an issue, but uh, when you will go for multivariate models, particularly there is a, a, we have a component called as a simultaneous equation modeling or structural equation modeling. In that context, you know model identification is a very, very serious issue. If you do not identify properly that model, then the process of estimation or its interpretation or reliability will be get affected. So, what you have to do first uh, means you must have a very sound knowledge that is theoretical knowledge before you go for uh, you know fitting the relationships. So, because uh, uh, so for the interpretation part is a concern. So, the theoretical knowledge or theoretical background will give you lots of you know ideas how to interpret this particular model or you know when you will go for forecasting issue. So, these are the standard assumptions through which OLS technique is uh, practically feasible if these assumptions are on other way around then obviously this particular technique is you can say uh, the model you will get through this particular technique cannot be used for forecasting or you can you cannot build for any use because it will give you wrong signals or you can say wrong um, uh, indications so now now what is the best uh, idea is it? so when we have a model so y equal to alpha plus beta x then we have a, a received the models called as a y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x so now we have two standard estimators so this is called as alpha estimators and beta estimators you know this particular estimator should follow certain uh, you know principles so there are certain pr uh, principles behind this particular estimators this particular uh, this particular you know principles is called as uh, represented as a uh, the term called as a blue best linear unbiased estimator so that means whatever estimators we are receiving that is alpha head and beta head that should be best that should be linear one that should be unbiased ones okay so now you see here what is linear so linear means it's a linear combination of variable for instance uh, 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 x x bar is nothing but summation x i divided by n okay so that means 1 by n 1 into x 1 plus 1 by n 2 plus uh, uh, into x 2 into x 2 so 1 by n uh, n uh, you know so n 3 x 3 like this so these are all linear combination of x so the uh, so uh, what i like to say that whatever estimators value we have received alpha and beta head 
so it should be linear in nature so uh, so that the uh, you know the theorem can be a meaningful so that is how it's called as a best linear error with, with the class uh, cl uh, classical linear regression models the estimators what we have received by the process of estimation should be linear unbiased and you can say it must have a minimum variance so what is the uh, what is that minimum variance so be before that you must have linear in nature then second then there is equal as a mi, uh, minimum variance okay uh, or you say first start with unbiasedness unbiasedness means what is first bias bias means difference between expected uh, value of uh, you can say let's say we start with beta parameter only so estimated beta head should be equal to beta so this is true beta okay so now if the estimated beta is exactly equal to true beta so there is no gap at all but we are expecting something but uh, you know actually something that gap should be very very minimum if that gap should be high then obviously it will create lots of problems so that means for every problem whatever estimators we are receiving so that should be unbiased in nature that means the estimated value should be exactly equal to true full there, there should not be drastic difference between the two. Uh, as long as the difference is increasing then the model accuracy will be get affected okay so uh, this uh, this should be taken care so okay so this is th uh, second uh, uh, properties of this particular estimate so third is a minimum variance third is a minimum variance minimum variance so what is minimum variance now minimum variance is a, you have to find out uh, you know variance of variance of beta head is a, a should be less than equal to variance of uh, variance of uh, another estimator say beta starts okay so that means whatever estimator we have received that should be minimum variance you see variance is a, variance is an indicator through which we can judge the accuracy of a particular uh, theme or particular item if the variance uh, is very high and obviously uh, uh, obviously that mo uh, model can be you can say cannot be considered as the best fitted model so just like you know we have discussed details in the univariate data setup where uh, this particular component is called as a dispersion issue okay so that means the variation from the center point should not be so drastic high so it should be uniformly distributed and whatever the variance uh, we have received that should be the minimum one if it is a minimum one then the model can be treated as the best fitted one if it is not minimum then obviously it will get affected so variance should be uh, at the lower level then fourth one is it should be consistent okay consistency means it is integration of both minimum variance properties and unbiasedness property that means so e beta uh, for uh, estimator beta head so e beta head should be equal to beta and uh, variance of beta should be less than to another uh, variance uh, say beta uh, beta star so when you will go for unbiasedness property only then there is no link with minimum variance but when you will go for minimum variance then there is no uh, po no point to go for you can say unbiasedness property so that means there should be uh, there should be uh, you can say uh, uh, two things are completely different but suppose the consistency property is concerned it is the integration of both unbiasedness property and minimum so unbiased uh, unbiased property is that expected value estimated beta value is equal to true value that is not beta head in fact that is beta only so e beta head equal to beta and uh, variance of beta head should be less than to another vari uh, uh, variance of another estimator. So now if that is the case then this particular theorem is called as a blue best linear unbiased estimators. So now every model has to be tested with respect to all these indicators these are all called as a means these are we are assuming that these are the indicators through which we, we judge the reliability of the particular models if uh, whatever estimator we have received that should be taken care uh, with respect to all these indicators if these indicators are going on the right track then the model accuracy will be high and we can say that model is a reliable one so now we have to know what is exactly this reliability part of this modeling okay so this reliability part of this modeling basically you see here so what is exactly the proper setup here so now the model is like this y equal to uh, alpha plus beta x plus u all right so we are getting y head equal to alpha head plus beta head beta head x okay so now uh, so for the reliability is a concern so the uh, you uh, we have to integrate so many things okay so 
uh, because we like to know whether this alpha head and beta head are you can say a reliable one. So, that is with respect to this particular theorem blue best linear unbiased estimator. So, that means alpha head and beta head has to be checked so that uh, the theorem can be satisfied. Okay. So, that means the properties of all these estimators should be as per the rules uh, or principle of this econometric modeling. So, that is what we call it the best linear and unbiased and obviously, it will go by minimum variance and, uh, and consistent property. So, now, so how do you go for that? The when will you get the estimator models? Then basically, the estimator model will be represented by like this. This is followed by variance of alpha heads, okay? variance of alpha head and uh, with respect to beta head, we will receive variance of variance of beta heads. So, our standard assumption is that variance of alpha heads should be very, very low and variance of beta head should be uh, very, very low. So, with respect to variance of alpha and variation, variance of beta head, we like to receive the standard error of standard error of alpha head and standard error of beta head. So, which is derived through variance of alpha head, okay? which is derived through variance of alpha head. Then, there is a, uh, there is a term called as a start, start, then we have to apply the statistics actually to check whether this particular parameter is statistically significant or not. Okay. So, now uh, to know the statistical significance of this particular parameter that is what another part of the reliability, it is not like that whatever estimator we have received that is just you know uh, follow the principle of blue in the same time this particular item should be statistically significant and for that we need we, we have lots of test statistics okay, like you know t test, f test, z test like this. So, now uh, for this particular standard problem, so we usually help take the help of t statistic and f statistic and for this particular angle, so means so, uh, so far as the uh, uh, you know significance of the alpha head and beta head is concerned, we have to apply the t statistic and through which we like to make a judgment whether uh, this particular uh, parameter is statistical significant or, or not. If it is statistical significant, then obviously this particular uh, model can be considered if these uh, parameters are not statistically significant, then it will be problem, uh, uh, it will be problem definitely. But uh, you know here in this particular bivarial setup, so we have only two items, okay. so that is alpha head and beta heads. But when we will go for multivariate model, there are several betas like you know beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, alpha is just supporting component that is represented as a you know uh, intercept, uh, uh, sorry uh, so you know constant items and there is a slope item. The slope items are you can say uh, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 like this and you know uh, slow, uh, constant term we call it the intercept. This is what we stop, oh, we can get the supporting factor through which you have to start this issue like this you know. So, this particular representation is like this is this is alpha head, this is alpha head and through which you have to start the y head component that is nothing but uh, this particular item alpha head and beta head x. So, now this side is x axis and this side is y axis. So, now you, uh, you like to assume that this is particularly estimated model in between there is a true value, okay. these are the true value. So, we like to know uh, how the you know best fitted line can be derived through these you know start true values or true points because it should be uh, you know by default or you can say uh, by inspection it should be in, in, in the middle of all these points. So, the way you have to design it so that the you know path will be in between the two so that the model accuracy will be very high. So, now you know uh, when you have a plotted points uh, there are many ways you will get you know midpoints it may be uh, uh, you know like this uh, uh, when you have several points like this. So, it can be like this, it can be like this, it can be like this. So, all these things cannot be possible to uh, you can say consider. So, we have to choose one. Okay. So, that one must be very best. So, uh, by inspection it is very difficult. Of course, we can make a judgment, but it is not accurate judgment. So, that is how you have to go uh, through statistical procedure only. There is a statistical procedure, that statistical procedure is called as a reliability. A check. So, that reliability check will indicate whether this particular uh, uh, path is just, uh, best one or this particular path is best one or this particular path is best one. Okay. So, so far the significance of the parameter is concerned, then 
standard error of alpha, then we have to use t statistic t alpha head. Similarly, we have to see t beta heads. Okay. So, then uh, uh, since it is issue about the significance, then significance for significance level, we have to see, we have to the compare with the probability level. Okay. So, in this particular system, so the significance level we usually consider uh, at uh, you know 1 percent level, 5 percent level and 10 percent level. So, maximum limit we will go up to 10 percent. Okay, so, now 1 percent uh, if the some item is significant at 1 percent, then obviously uh, that means 99 percent chance uh, is you know hacked and 1 percent is not supporting. Similarly, if it is uh, at 5 percent that means 95 percent are supporting and 5 percent are not supporting. Again 10 if we will say 10 percent then 90 percent are supporting, 10 percent are not supporting. Again in between there are uh, these test procedures are usually divided into two parts called as a one tail test and two tail test. If it is a one tail test then it may be considered as a one percent level, five percent level, ten percent level. If it is two tail test then you have to divide by two. So, obviously a two tail test at one percent means we have to go 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. Similarly, 5 percent means you have to go for 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. Okay. Similarly, 10 percent you have to go for 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Okay. So, this is how you have to proceed. So, the, that means this particular item is normally distributed. So, this part and this part has to be considered. This is plus side and this is minus side. So, th this is how you have to observe. That means, 50 percent is this side and 50 side is this side. So, if it is one tail, then it is a skewed distribution that is positively skewed or negatively skewed. So, this is how you have to go through it. Okay. So, now, so probability level you have to de decide and probability level you have to decide. And with this particular system, so we have to check the standard uh, you know uh, best fitted model or reliability model. So, now I, I am giving you the exact procedure of reliability. What is all about this reliability of this estimated model? So, reliability, so far as the reliability is concerned, reliability of estimated is concerned. So, we have to check two things. Okay. First is the, with respect to reliability, reliability of parameters and second is the reliability of the, reliability of the overall fitness of the model. Overall fitness of the model okay overall fitness of the model okay so first is a, a, a reliability of estimate that means uh, the initial starting point is you must have y information x information your problem your your basic relationship between y and x uh, must be known to you then you have to make a functional relationship that is what we will call it a, in mathematical model then you transfer into statistical model uh, by introducing the error component, then you have to uh, estimate the models by the use of OLS technique, then you like to have y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. So, the moment you have y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x, then we are going for reliability. So, uh, so the reliability has a two parts, one part is with respect to significance of the parameters that to alpha head and beta head. So, what we have just explained detail and second is the overall fitness of the overall fitness of the model. So, the overall fitness of the model is that, uh, that can be also standard uh, techniques through which you have to judge the overall fitness of the model. Just like you know see, a, 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 here there are three parts, uh, you know alpha plus uh, beta x, alpha one part, beta uh, x another part and you know y is another part. So, this is a one side and this two part is another side. So, this should be you know this, uh, uh, this particular reliability means so, what is the overall impact of this particular model? So, that is means excellent side and un unexplained side, then obviously uh, the reliability of the individual parameters. That means section A and section B, that is alpha head bit alpha head alpha plus beta x is one part and you know u is another part. So, we like to know what is the judgment of explained item and what is the judgment of unexplained item. Okay. So, uh, reliability has a two parts with that is with respect to parameter uh, significance check and this is with respect to overall fitness of the model. Okay. So, for this uh, reliability of the parameter is concerned. So, we like to know the significance 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 of parameters. So, that means 
if parameters. So, since uh, mean that means, if your objective is to check the reliability of parameters, that means, uh, the idea is very clear. We like to know what is the significance level of the parameters. If that item is statistically significant and uh, close to 1 percent, then that the model accuracy is very high. If it is the, oh, if that item is not statistically significant and 1 percent at 1 tail test or 2 tail test, if it is the totally fair, then you have to go for again 5 percent. Okay. So, now if 5 percent again you have to go 1 tail test or 2 tail test, if, if it is not significant, then you have to go to 10 percent level. Again 10 percent level you have to check it at 1 per, uh, one tail through 1 tail test and you can say 2 tail test. If not, you know, after the 10 percent, uh, 10 percent experiment, if it is not statistical significant, then we can conclude that this particular, uh, uh, you know, item or variable is not at all statistically significant. Yes, there is a relationship, but that relationship is not strong enough to uh, use for, you know, forecasting. So, that is how the reliability, you know, rule is concerned. So, now, what is the significance of parameters? Yes, the significance of parameters we have two aspects that is you know uh, alpha uh, alpha aspect and beta aspects okay so we like to know what is the significance of alpha head and beta head for that you know we have to know two things okay so alpha head is known to us so we like to know t alpha head uh, and t alpha head uh, t alpha head uh, you know uh, tabulated value okay tabulated value and this is estimated value this is estimated value. Okay, T alpha head and T beta head. So no, so this is not estimated in field. This we call it a calculated value. Okay, calculated calculated T statistic and tabulated T statistics. So now we have to compare the calculated T, T of alpha head and uh, tabulated T of alpha head. Similarly, you have to calculate calculate the, or you have to compare the calculated T of beta head and tabulated T head beta head. So like. So, now what is happening here? So, now this T of alpha head depends upon two components. T of alpha head depends upon the individual alpha head value and its standard error of uh, its standard error of alpha head. Similarly, you know for beta head, so we have two aspects that is you know tabulated stat tabulated uh, uh, T statistic and you know calculated T statistic. The calculated T statistic again depend upon beta head and standard error of beta head. Okay. So, this is one part of the story, okay. one part of the story that is what we call is a reliability of the parameters. So, uh, once uh, what is the exact structure of reliability of the parameters? Uh, uh, so, we like to know uh, means we must have alpha head value and beta head value. So, we must have a variance of alpha head and variance of beta head. Then, we have to get the standard error of alpha head and standard error of beta head because uh, the square root of variance of alpha head is nothing but standard error of alpha head and square root of beta variance of beta head is nothing but standard error of beta head. So, now that means, we must uh, you we must have means we must uh, have uh, alpha head and variance of alpha head and uh, beta head and variance of beta head. Then everything will be a uh, automatic means not automatic everything can be very smooth to get this uh, work done alright. So, now the second part of the model is called as a reliability of uh, uh, reliability of overall fitness of the model. So, this is what we call as a significance or otherwise it is called as a significance significance of overall fitness of the model overall fitness of the model okay, fitness of the models. So, overall fitness of the model for a particular econometric uh, you know uh, technique uh, solely depends upon uh, and the statistic called as a R squares. Okay, R square. This is what it is usually depends upon R square. This R square represented as a coefficient of determination. We 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 have discussed uh, 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 R component that to small r that is what we call is a simple correlation. So covariance of x y upon uh, sigma x and sigma y that is if with respect to two variables. In fact, the starting point of correlation is two variables. So, now, um, we, we, we must have you know uh, 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 we must have uh, co, 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 uh, two variable then you can calculate the correlation. Then uh, uh, correlation coefficient simply represented as a small r if you make it a square then it is square of correlation coefficient. But you know for vibrate models this particular small r and capital r more or less change, but 
when will the square it r square that is referred to inequality it is a contemporary it is a small r square but this r square this r square there is a difference okay so this is called as a coefficient of determination this particular item is called as a coefficient of determination this particular item is call, called as a coefficient of determination what is the rule of coefficient determination the rule of coefficient determination is that uh, so it is the ratio or it is the ratio between explained to total so that means what is the percentage of explained uh, component is influencing the dependent variable so that is what we will call it r square that is overall fitness of the model so this r uh, the moment there are two uh, means two steps here first is you have to calculate the r square statistics so now once you will get r square value so that r square value has to be tested again because here we are we are having y equal to alpha head and beta head x only so that means alpha head is known to us and beta head is known to us nothing is available here but lots of other statistics also simultaneously we have to calculate so for the reliability is concerned and one part of this particular item is called as a r square so r, r square is the ratio between explained sum square by total sum square we will derive details uh, in the next class not today so now so this r square structure is like this uh, means it is the ratio between explained sum by you can say total sum squares so now so uh, the uh, so far as the reliability of r square is a concern then it depends upon it depends upon f statistics okay Th this depends upon f statistics so that means for significance of the parameters we are using uh, all t statistics and uh, uh, for overall fitness of the model we are using the f statistics so now like this particular case uh, here also you like to know what is the calculated f and what is the tabulated f okay calculated f and tabulated f so now we have to compare the calculated f with the tabulated f so means what is exactly uh, the difference between calculated f and tabulated f or similarly calculated uh, t alpha head and tabulated t alpha head, calculated t beta head and tabulated t beta head. So now the thing is that uh, for calculated there is a standard uh, you know techniques or you can say formula through which you can obtain this value ok. But uh, there is you know standard by simulation uh, we have a statistical tables ok. So statistical table has a standard norms. So now we have a calculated statistics and we have a standard norm. So we have to compare the calculated statistic which is the standard norms. If the calculated statistic is greater than to the standard norm, then the statistic uh, then that item will be statistically significant. But the standard norms are available, uh, you know, the at different significance level. For instance, at one percent level, at five percent level, at ten percent level. Again for one tail and two tail uh, one tail two, two tail again one tail two tail again one two tail that means with respect to one percent five percent and ten percent but uh, some of the standard uh, books there is you know chance of twenty five percent they may go also up to twenty five percent but uh, uh, but uh, you know what harker you know who for statistician you know finance finance problem or any other technical problems so we usually handle up to you can say 10 percent level only, but uh, social science problems oh, which is very complicated and when your sample size is very extremely high and high then that times you can go for uh, but very extreme case you have to go for 25 percent, but 25 percent is not at all uh, you know very reliable one. So the most uh, effective way you have to go up to 10 percent ok. So if it is not up to 10 percent then you have to reject or redesign the structure entirely all right. So now for t statistics you have a t tables and for f statistics you have a f tables ok. So again for t, t tabulated and you know f tabulated there is another items we need to uh, integrate to get this particular item that is what we call is a degrees of freedom degrees of freedom degrees of freedom means it is the difference between total number of observations and the number of uh, you know independent variables uh, represent in the system. So, we will discuss in details when we will go for that is what we will call sometimes, sometimes call it is a n minus k n is the total number of sample size and k is the total number of uh, total number of variables uh, independent variables in the systems ok. So, n minus k is the 
uh, or total number of parameters in the system rather uh, instead of two variables you can say that k represents total number of variable uh, parameters involved in this particular model so now this n minus k represents the degrees of freedom so okay if the degrees of freedom is very high then the model accuracy will be very high but you know for uh, this is true for this t statistics but for f statistics uh, we have two different in fact uh, for this f statistics we have two different component one is called as a explained sum squares okay and another is called as a total sum squares so that means uh, there are three standard items one is called as a tss then uh, ess then sometimes called as a rss or you can say sometimes it is called as a unexplained sum squares explained sum squares okay so tss represent total sum squares which is nothing but the actually we will derive from this uh, uh, structure y equal to alpha plus beta x plus u so this particular item is nothing but explained sum squares and u related to unexplained residual sum squares and t represents to y okay so this is how the all about the integration so but the calculating procedure is something different with respect to total sum square explained sum square and residual sum square so now so when will we when we have a information so we have we have y information and x information through which you fit the model you get the model but uh, anyway you fit but when will go over uh, uh, typically sm um, means in a smaller version of the problem then usually we will not derive every every time so what we have to do we have y information and we have x information so we know what is alpha hydro formula and we know what is beta hydro formula similarly we have also formula for variance of alpha head and variance of beta heads so again we uh, through statistics t statistics there is a calculated statistic how to get this t value so now uh, if you go sequentially with respect to the available information then you can uh, automatically or by uh, very easily you can get this particular uh, value that is you know t alpha had calculated and t beta had calculated similarly in the case of us so now uh, once you have y information and uh, x information for this particular bivariate setup so what you have to do uh, in the first step itself you have to calculate some y some x some x square some y square some x y okay so now uh, in the same times you must uh, identify <coughs> number of sample size that is you know n okay and in the same times what is k in fact for this bivariate models k is usually represented as a uh, 2 so that means the uh, structure is a n minus 2 degrees of freedom is a n minus 2 k represents number of parameters in the systems number of parameters in the system or number of variables in this particular systems all right so now this will determine the degrees of freedom so now once uh, once you have such information then you first calculate the alpha statistic alpha head statistic then beta head statistics okay Al first you start with actually beta head so that is summation x uh, x y by summation x square or uh, if uh, means it is in a deviation format if you go by other way around then it is n summation x y minus some x sum y divided by n summation x square minus some x all squares. This is the standard formula. Okay. So, whatever shape of this particular problem, but you know whether the shape of the problem is perfectly okay or not, that is how we are checking here. So, that uh, that is how there is no uh, you know hard and fast rule that we have to you know check the functional form or you have to derive etcetera first you do it but uh, uh, the best procedure is you check it properly then you fit the model accordingly then obviously reliability is very consistent or else what you can do to you start with something then automatically at the point of reliability it will be give you indication whether this model is perfectly okay for forecasting or not okay okay so now let's let us assume that we, 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 we are you know we have no knowledge about it all these testing etc so we start uh, by the standard rules you get the alpha head and you get the beta head so then you fit the model like y y y head equal to alpha head and beta head x so now you calculate the alpha head statistic beta head statistic then you go by standard procedures get the variance of alpha head get the variance of beta head then get the standard error of alpha head and standard error of beta head then you calculate the t of alpha head calculate the t of beta head then you compare with it calculate the t of alpha 
t of alpha head and calculated t of beta head. So, this is the tabulated value available uh, uh, available with you and obviously, you have to calculate the value. So, then you have to make a comparative analysis. In fact, uh, uh, you go any statistics books or any econometrics books in the end of the books, you will find the standard uh, statistical tables, you know with respect to t statistic, with respect to f statistic and with respect to j statistic etcetera, etcetera. But, uh, you know uh, we need only uh, t, t tables and you know f tables. But t statistic is easy to understand and easy to uh, pick up, but f statistic is a little bit complicated. Why? Because when we will get r square, then f is the difference in, in this particular setup, f is the ratio between ESS by TSS. So, now ESS is a standard uh, uh, standard uh, you know statistics and TSS is also standard statistics. So, ES depends upon uh, something because it is a it is degree of freedom is completely different and TSS degrees of freedom is completely different. You see here, this is this is ESS part. Okay. So, th this part the degrees of freedom, this part degrees of freedom is okay and this part degrees of freedom is because it depends upon two parts, but this is only one part. Okay, so, now, so since the degrees of freedom are, are uh, different, so obviously, in the case of ESS, the degrees of freedom will be completely different and uh, uh, you know uh, below TSS, the uh, degrees of freedom is also completely different. So, as a result, so in the F case, uh, uh, for F statistic, the tab table is something different. So, that is why you must be you must have thorough knowledge how to pick up the tabulated figure. So, once you get the tabulated figure, then you have a calculated figure, you make a comparative analysis. If the calculated statistic is higher enough than the tabulated statistic, then the item is statistically significant. Usually, you start with at 1 percent, because 1 uh, statistically significant and 1 percent is the best. If it is not best, then you have to go for 5 percent, the second best. Okay. If it is not 5 percent, then you have to go for third base that is 10 percent. After that, if, if that item is not statistically significant at 10 percent, then the better you have to stop there. Stop means you have to either redesign or you can say uh, restructures, then again you have to go for reliability test till you get this you know item significant. But uh, for bivariate structure, it is very easy to pick up or you can proceed, but when you will go for multivariate. It is uh, the problem is very complicated, it is very difficult to get all these variables statistically significant or overall fitness. Obviously, when you if introduce one after another variable or when you list move from bivariate to multivariate, then obviously, expand sum is all you know with respect to x items and total sum is with respect to y only. So, obviously, uh, 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 y is always 1, so that item will be remain constant. So, when you add one after another item the numerator will be start increasing. So, as a result r square will be always high once you introduce one after another variable. So, when r square is uh, uh, ex exclusively high, then your f statistic will be exclusively high. So, the overall fitness will be usually very high or you can say you can be uh, get significant, but the parameter you may not get significant. So, you have to make a compromise. So, the compromise rule we will de uh, we'll discuss details when we will go for multivariate from R. So, with this today we will stop here and we will discuss the details in the next class. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.